Hello everyone, we're going to get started very soon. Uh, we'll be getting started in about a minute or two. I'm just waiting for a couple of more people to join the webinar. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're um, calling from. My name is Lisa. I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. Thank you for joining our Platform Basics, an overview webinar and training session. Uh, on your GoToWebinar control panel, which should be on the right-hand side of your screen, there is a questions area. Um, throughout this webinar, uh, feel free to utilize that area to ask any questions you have. Um, I'll be glancing at that area as I go through things. Uh, and at the end, we'll also have a designated time where I'll be uh, doing a Q&A and answering any questions you have at that time. So feel free to use that space if anything pops up before then. This webinar is meant to help guide any new or existing organizations on the platform and give you a technical overview of the key things you want to accomplish on the platform and how to best utilize it. Uh, so please keep in mind, you know, we may have an assortment of different organizations on the platform, some that have never used Mighty Cause before, some that have used us for many years um, and just want a refresher. So I'll be trying to cover as much information as possible for everyone. So to get started, as you see on your screen, I am on the Mighty Cause homepage. Uh, to, for those organizations that are new to the platform, if you haven't set yourself up as an administrator for your nonprofit yet, you'll want to make sure that you search your organization on the platform and um, ask to manage your organization be set up as an administrator. Once you're already set up as an administrator and you log in, when you select your user icon, in the top right corner, you should see your organization that you're managing at the very top, and you can simply select that to head to your organization. Anytime that you're on different areas of the platform, you'll always see that user icon if you're logged in, so there's always an easy way to get back to your profile page. Great. Now that we're on the profile page, since we're logged in and since we are set up as an administrator for our nonprofit, we see a left-hand side dashboard. And this is where we're going to manage um, and edit all of our, um, our page and review information. Um, or donors or anyone that's not set up as an admin for your organization, they won't see that dashboard. Uh, their page is going to be viewed a little differently because they don't have that on their page. So you don't have to worry about donors or anyone else seeing that. Before we begin to edit our page, um, we will want to actually head to uh, our overview. So this is, at, this is the first section of your left-hand side dashboard. Now, if you haven't used the platform before, um, you'll get a, this little tutorial that will describe to your dashboard and any information. So let's skip that information. And I want to call out your overview section because this is a great page to reference as you begin to utilize your page. Your overview is meant to give you a quick glance on at metrics in regards to your organization. We're actually going to be actively our analytics, so stay tuned um, for that in the future. But in the meantime, it will give you an idea based on the time period you have listed here. I'll automatically state 90 days. Uh, but you can also so select 30 days, one year, and it'll give you an idea of profile visits, 
retention, your effective fee, how many new donors you've received, and how many total donations you've received on the platform. Now, there are other areas on those site where you can review some of this information, such as total donations and retention report. But again, this is a really quick way to see those stats for your organization. As well, if there are new um, handbooks that we are, I'm sorry, ebooks that we've created for your organization, we'll be advertising that on your uh, overview as well. If you are new to the platform, you'll want to also make sure to check out our to-do list. So this to-do list is a really easy way to check off things that are really critical for you to complete on your page. If you are participating in a giving event that uh, we are the technology provider for, your giving event may actually require that you complete this checklist in order to participate in the event. Um, if you are participating in a giving event, you'll just wanna make sure to check out their registration requirements if that um, you know, is something that you'll have to complete or do. Otherwise, these are all suggested um, you know, options for you to complete. So the first thing on this to-do list, and let me just zoom in a little bit more, is our logo. And the second one is our background image. Now we can either select on the hyperlink right here, the under, on primary logo, and it'll take us to a space to edit that. And I just went back to show you how else we can get there. Or we can go to our profile page. Now, an easy, quick and easy way to get to your profile page when you've been on another area of your dashboard is simply selecting fundraising, or we can select the drop down as well, and then select organization profile. And that's a really quick and easy way to get to your area. So I've already inputted our logo here, but if I wanted to change it or edit it, all I have to do is select that pencil, select upload image, and then import an image that I have um, in, for our logo. One thing to note, your logo should be a one-to-one -one ratio, which means that it should be a square. If you have a rectangular image um, or an image that is not the size of a square, you want to make sure that you photo edit your photo to match those requirements or else your image will be cropped and it won't include your entire logo. Once you have imported that, as I noted, you'll also want to add your background image and that's the second step of your to-do list. Now, right now we have um, just a auto image that our system has put in that we have available in our gallery, but I wanna customize it. I wanna add my own image. Um, before I do so, for a lot of organizations, especially new organizations, having nice background photos or just ni general nice um, photos to include in marketing is sometimes difficult to get. And one resource I really recommend checking out is unsplash.com for those of you who are not familiar with Unsplash. Unsplash is a resource that allows you to reuse images for free, and it can be for commercial reasons. Um, so it's a really great tool to utilize. Um, you simply search a key term. You know, we could even search, they have some suggested, let's look at COVID-19. And they have some images that you can utilize for free. So I highly recommend to check this out because there's a lot of great high quality images here that you can use. So I'm actually going to take a image that I took from Unsplash and I'm going to upload it on here. Great, so now that I have my background image and my logo, I actually want to add a little color overlay on that background image. Um, so this allows you to add a filter color or I can make the image either more transparent 
or opaque. So that's just dependent on what you want. So I'm just going to choose a, uh, another color. And then once I've made that change, I'm going to click save. Great. So another step that you want to consider doing that is not on your to-do list, but again, is a really great option for building out your profile is adding a theme color. This theme color is tied to the color that is listed on your donate button, on your fundraise. It's that blue color that you're seeing right there. So I wanna go ahead and update this theme color. And to do so, I can select this palette image right at the bottom right corner of my banner. And as always, as you're editing your profile page, you can simply at the top select quick edit and select the category that you wanna choose. So I'm gonna select theme color. And it's gonna lead me here. And I'm going to choose the color that I want to change it to. And once I choose that color, I'll simply click save, and then that will save my change. And as you see, that donate button has changed the color. So I'm gonna keep it as I currently have, so I'm not going to click save. So we're gonna keep it as is. So I'm gonna scroll down through the page and explain all of the editing options we have available as well. So your name that you see listed here, if you are new to the platform, will you will see your original IRS name if you haven't used the platform before. Now this name is simply your display or your DBA, so you can change this at any time that you want. If you are looking to change your legal name that you um, have registered with the IRS, maybe you've changed it with your state, you can simply select the legal name hyperlink right here and you'll be able it'll, it'll take you to the space where you can go ahead and update your legal name in your organization settings and we'll get to organization settings in a second so let's go back to our profile and let's also go back to the to-do list and reference what we haven't completed yet so we've done our primary logo we've done our background image we still have to do our thank you page and our description as well as set up EFT. So let's work on completing our story because that is also on our organization profile page. So the story section is right here in the about. You have an inline text editor, as you see at the top of it, that allows you to add images, add text, and to format your story section however you want. Um, if you have something really custom that you want, there are some organizations that actually make their own copy in Photoshop and elsewhere, and they simply actually add their text as an image into this area, and that's one option. Again, if you have a really beautiful infographics that you want to include, that's one option that you can do. But our inline text editor has actually a lot of great um, and useful tools for you to utilize when it comes to formatting. I've taken some text from our website and I'm going to just copy and paste and then I'm going to format within Mighty Cause. So now that I have our text in there, I can go ahead and begin formatting. So I'm going to bold some text. So I'm going to select Command or Control B. I want to underline, so I'm gonna um, select Command or Control U. And if there's anything that I want to italicize, I can simply highlight and select Command or Control I. And those shortcuts are also available in a support article in our support form called Inline Editor Shortcuts. If there's anything that I want, I wanna create a headline for, I can write that down and then select the type that I want and write Mighty Cause. I also wanna add a photo into here. As I mentioned, that's a great way to make your about section really pop out. So I'm going to import, insert an image.
And this is also another image that I was able to take from Unsplash. So as you see, that was really quick and easy. One thing to know as you are considering, you know, what you're going to include in this text, um, this is a really great mission statement for your organization. You know, consider this the about section of your website. What information do you want to include and provide to donors um, about your organization? If you're participating in a giving event or if you're running a specific campaign for your organization through your profile, so you're soliciting donations from your profile page, you wanna add any pertinent information about your campaign on here. Um, and then you can utilize, you know, you can add information in your about section, but you also have a custom tab that you can utilize too. This is another area, I can simply select the plus button and add another area where I can provide information. So I can rename this custom tab to be whatever I want. Um, but again, it's a really great useful area if you want to shout out people, include, you know, create your own special type of media gallery that is separate from the media gallery below. Anything you want, um, you can really do with the custom tab area. So I'm actually going to remove this tab. We don't need it at this time, but we have this available. So let's say I am running a campaign through our organization profile. That's going to be the main way I'm soliciting donations. Um, one thing that I probably want to do is include donation metrics and a thermometer on the page. So to do that, I can actually scroll up and I see two areas underneath my donate button. One says fundraising stats and the other says goal. So I'm going to add fundraising stats and that enables our donation metrics on our page. Now, one thing to note is you can actually edit these metrics to include or to not include certain information. By selecting the um, pencil icon, you can choose to display amount raised or number of donors. So let's say I don't want number of donors, I'm going to uncheck that, I don't want that shown. In regards to calculation method, I want to include offline donations. So if our team is entering offline donations, they're going to be added to the total. And most importantly, I'm going to change our calculation date. Now, this is something that's really important for you to consider. This is the date that your metrics are going to calculate from. So let's say you want to show donors holistically how much money you've raised in the entirety of your time on Mighty Cause. If that's the case, you'll want to select Calculate Over All Time. So all the donations you've received on the platform, it's going to calculate from then. But let's say I am running a specific campaign, as I noted, and I only want donations to start, let's say, June 1st. So I'm going to select Start Calculation of Specific Date. And then I'm going to select this calendar icon and select the date that I want donations to start calculating from. I want it to start at 12 p.m., so I'm going to add that info select the check mark, and then now only donations starting from June 1st at 12 p.m. is going to be calculated from that um, on my fundraising page. Now, if you're creating any other fundraising campaigns on the platform, we have a similar, similar tool available. It'll, it's available in your settings on your fundraising pages, uh, but that's just something to know if you are creating a campaign on your profile. Great. So now that we have that um, edited, we'll also add our goal and we can simply do that by selecting the plus goal sign. And then we can now input a goal. So I'm going to edit a goal and write $10,000. Click save. And now we're all good to go when it comes to showing our fundraising stats on the page. So now that we've completed the description, we have two things left on our to-do list, which is our thank you page and our EFT. And before I go into those last two options, I also wanna complete a couple of things on our um, 
on our profile. So as you scroll down your profile, you have a couple of different media galleries available to you. So you can add your own media gallery where you can simply import images from your desktop, from your computer, et cetera. But you can also connect to Facebook and Instagram. So if you do have a you know, photo gallery that you really wanna highlight because you're automatically highlighting it in those feeds, you can do so by um, enabling them and then connecting it to your user account. At the very bottom of your profile page, you'll see organization info. Now this will provide quick information for donors if they're looking you know, for contact information, maybe they just wanna quickly reference your EIN number. So to edit this information, you'll simply select the pencil icon at the top right corner of this area. So I'm gonna click proceed. And then I can go in and add as much information or as little information as I want. Um, this is also one thing to know. Again, you'll be, you can enter whatever mailing address or display name that you want here. The display name and the mailing address that's listed on your profile is gonna be separate from what's in settings that's listed as your legal address and your legal organization name. This is the information you wanna provide donors. If you want to add um, your website or your email or phone number, you would select links and contact, and I will quickly add that information here. Great, now that I've added the information that I want, I'm going to click save. And if I head back to organization profile through the dashboard, and I scroll down, I'm, and I'm gonna simply reload this page. I'm going to see the information that I've added onto my organization info, was, which is that website and that email address. And I highly recommend adding contact information, if possible, a phone number, because again, um, if there's a question a donor has that's pertinent to your organization, if they contact our support team, we're going to direct them to contact you, uh, but it's really difficult if, we, if a contact information isn't listed there that we can provide to your donors, et cetera. Okay, so oh, just a question that's come in is when I go into organization settings, et cetera, my view of the items is confined to a small section at the top of the page and I can only scroll through a small part of it at a time. Um, this might be a, a, a broader question that will be better if you contact us directly in support because I'm not sure if it's related to the device you're utilizing, um, but it, if you go into organization settings, so settings, organization settings, just like you are on my laptop, you should be able to scroll through and see all the information here and shouldn't be confined to a small section. Now, if you're editing your organization info, as you saw, it's gonna be that pop-up box, um, but I would consider playing around with the device that you're utilizing and seeing if you're getting the same error. If you are, feel free to contact our support team and we can help you through that. Um, another question that's just popped up, are we able to change the donation amounts and provide details for each amount? Great question, and I was about to get into that. Um, so now that we've edited our profile and we've done all the aesthetic things to the page that we need to do, we can now go in and edit our donate button and the things that are related to the checkout flow. So to do so, on your left-hand side dashboard, you wanna select fundraising, and then you wanna select the option that says checkout flow. So your checkout flow is going to be divided up into two areas if you're on our uh, starter plan. It's going to say checkout steps at the top, and then post checkout 
um, as well. If you have our advanced plan, you'll also have the opportunity to add advanced custom questions onto your checkout flow. If you're on our starter plan, you won't have access to that at the moment. So to edit the donation amounts or add descriptions to your page that's available within checkout steps, the first option is suggested donations. So all I have to do is enable that. And then I can go ahead and add my own donation amounts. If I wanna add donation descriptions, I can simply select donate, add amount descriptions and then add whatever I want to add on here. So I can say um, purchases, you know, X things, Y things. I can simply save that. And then once you're finished editing everything, I'm going to show you what that looks like on the checkout flow once you've added that. As we scroll down, um, dedication option will automatically be enabled. This allows the donor to add a dedication in memory of or on behalf of someone um, through the checkout flow. We also have a designation option. Uh, if your organization has funds or specific programs that you want donors to have the ability to select. For example, maybe your school and you have um, an arts program or a sports program that you want donors to have the option to choose from, you can add that here. Please note it's not a requirement for donors to fill this out. So um, that's one thing to consider. It's not required for donors to choose a program to fill out is simply they'll see it as an option to review. The last thing within checkout steps is data collection. Um, this allows you to enable basic data info that you want collected during the checkout flow. So um, the most popular ones are obviously address information and phone number. Address information is going to be something that's automatically um, taken from donors. They don't have to add anything else. If you opt into collecting phone numbers, it's going to be an optional um, field for donors. So they're not gonna be required to provide their phone numbers, they're just going to see it as optional. Um, email address is automatic. That's how we send the donation receipt to donors. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, so all of that info, and I'll also show you that when I'm um, finished talking about the checkout flow, I'll show you where you can find then all of that donor information once you've collected that and received donations. So then at the very top, you wanna select post checkout. So this is going to be related to once that donor completes the transaction, what happens? And the thank you page is actually one of the last steps we can do to complete our to-do list. So the thank you page is the page that pops up once a transaction's completed and it says thank you for donating. What's great is that you have the option of adding your own message here and even you're at adding your own um, call to action button. Um, so you can provide hyperlinks to um, you know, your own website, say, hey, check out more information here. Uh, and the call to action uh, tool is a really great way to, again, let donors know maybe you have a newsletter you want them to subscribe to and you want to link to a certain area of your website where they can actually click subscribe. There's a lot of great things that you can utilize the space for and that you'd want to consider. You can also add images, et cetera. It's the inline text editor here is going to be the one that's similar to your about section. And once you make all the changes um, you want to add here, and I'll just quickly you know, copy and paste some text just so that you get an idea. And I'm going to add, oops. I'm going to save that. And then let's check out this preview. And this is what it will look like to donors and a message will show up letting them know um, that a receipt has been emailed out to them. Once we scroll down in this post checkout area, you'll see a space where you can actually add a custom thank you message on the donation receipt we send out to the donor. So after they receive that thank you page, a receipt will be emailed 
to their email address that they've entered during the checkout flow. And then um, in that email receipt, we'll provide tax receipt information, but you can add your own thank you message and let their donors know personally from your organization, you know how thankful you are for their donation. Again, you can add a hyperlink to your website, head over here, et cetera. Um, and you can actually preview your own receipt by simply selecting preview and then sending yourself um, a receipt. Uh, one other question that's come in, can a custom thank you emails be set up based on donation amounts or is that one message for everyone? That's one message for everyone. Um, it's going to be just a blanketed message you can send out to people. Obviously, you know, if you want to do your own reach out for donors of a specific level, you'll have a report that provides you that information. So let's head back to the organization profile and just take a look at what our page looks like now that we've made those slice edits. So as you see here, I have our um, descriptions and our levels. Uh, the color that you see here will be based off the theme color that we've edited on our profile. If a donor would like to make a monthly donation, they can simply select monthly donation or add their own custom amount. And then it's a streamlined, easy process. And at the end, they always see their total amount and ability to cover fees. So really simple and easy. And as well, this donate button or this checkout page is something you can actually advertise. If you want donors to simply head to this checkout page, you can simply copy and paste this URL in your own call to action, in your marketing, in your social media, et cetera. Um, so what's really great is that, again, you can simply direct them to this page. So as you begin receiving donations and you are receiving donors, as an administrator for your nonprofit, you're gonna receive a donation notification email every time you receive a donation. So you can see, you know, if Molly Sue or Bob Smith made a donation, um, but this information is also available in the report section of your left-hand side dashboard. So the report section has a couple of different reports that are available to you, and I'll go through one by one each one very quickly. So the all donations is going to show you all of the donations that you've received on the platform um, based off an automatic last 30 day time period. You can customize this report period. So if you wanna look at a specific day, you can. You can simply select custom date range, or you can choose this week to date, this year to date, et cetera. You can also, uh, if you are looking for particular donations, you can also choose your donation type. Or if you've created other fundraisers, you can also create by specific fundraising type. Within your report, you're going to get a breakdown of your total donations and also your net donation. So you can keep an eye on how much in total your organization has received and how many offline donations your organization has entered. This report is going to provide you basic information on those donations. So it's going to show you the donor's name, their amount, the date, if they were uh, created a, if they donated to a fundraiser, or if they, and then the email address associated to their donation. So if you are looking for further information, so if you want to see their address, maybe you're collecting phone numbers, or you wanna see if a particular donor cover transaction fees during the checkout flow, what you'll wanna do is download this report. And you can do so by selecting the download icon here. And this will download your report into a CSV file, and that will have all of that comprehensive information on there for you. If you are looking to review any offline donations, you can select the offline donation report here. And as well, you can enter offline donations um, through the offline donation tool. For those of you who are not familiar with offline donations, um, just to provide a quick explanation, if you receive any donations offline from the platform, so let's say your organization has directly received a check, cash, again, something that's not processed through our platform, 
you can add an offline donation right through here um, so that your total metrics and all of your reporting can be done in one area. So you can enter all of that information here. So one question that's come through is, can, can you have someone else get those donation notification, those email notification for donors or have multiple people get those notifications? Whoever is set up as an administrator will have access to that info and I can go through how you add and remove admins in a second. Uh, but again, yeah, anyone who's set up as an admin can receive those. If there are certain admins that don't want those emails, they can actually turn off those notifications. But anyone who's set up as an admin will receive that. The recurring donations report on your left-hand side dashboard will give you a glimpse of all of the recurring donations you have for your organization. So that, so any donors that have chosen that monthly option. What's really great about this report is it also tells you the status of those recurring donors. So if you've had any recurring donors cancel or their um, credit card is about to expire, we provide you all of that information so you can keep track of that info and also contact any donors then that you want to reach out to. This is a great place to reference when you're considering you know, creating email segments and email lists of who you want to reach out to for specific campaigns that you've created. Another great tool to utilize is our retention report. I think this is one of the, um, one of the most useful, I mean, and sometimes I think underutilized report on the platform. Our retention report allows you to, to attack your donor retention. So which donors have donated to you in the past and have either returned or not returned to your, to your organization. This is really useful, especially if you are doing an annual campaign or you're planning on doing an annual campaign on the platform because this provides you an easy way to see a segment of people that you should directly reach out to and contact. You know, you can pull up a list of last year, all your donors that donated last year that you haven't retained yet. So if you have utilized the platform before, if you're new to the platform, make sure you're checking out this report um, and seeing you know, how you can, um, the different segments that you can utilize. Or, or take from your donor retention. And then the last area of your report period is your disbursements. And that's where you're gonna see your disbursement history. You're going to receive um, you know, all the disbursements that have been sent out to your organization. There's going to be a list here. If you wanna see further information about that disbursement, you can simply select the disbursement you wanna see more info from. And then that will provide you a breakdown of that disbursement and any fees associated to it. So any admins will automatically receive a disbursement email. Um, so you can um, review information from that email, but if any time you wanna come back and review your disbursements, it's always available there. Okay, so there's one other question that's come in so far. So we've used this system five years ago for a donor fundraising event. When Giveout Day started using this again, we had an account already set up and what we did five years ago was still set up those events. How do we delete those or get those to show up since they're from five years ago on our profile with our org name? That's a great question. So, and one area that I have didn't go through, and that is the campaign section of your organization. So you want to head to your left-hand side dashboard, and with the campaigns, you want to select campaigns, and that's going to show you any fundraising pages that's been associated with your nonprofit. So the, your campaign section's divided into two areas. At the top, you'll see it's, there's two tabs. One is your campaigns, and the, section, and the other section's period up here. So your campaigns is going to be any campaigns that an administrator for your nonprofit has created. Period up here is any campaigns that a non-administrator has created. So maybe I created a fundraiser for your nonprofit, I'm doing a birthday fundraiser. So if there are any fundraisers that you want to hide or delete, 
you can do so through the last column of your campaign section. So the eyeball, by selecting the eyeball, and I can quickly do that here, I am hiding the fundraiser on the platform. So if someone searches for my nonprofit, it's not, they can't find this fundraiser. And as well, if it was being listed on your organization profile, it won't be shown anymore. If there's a fundraiser you wanna completely delete, you can select the delete icon and you can completely delete the fundraiser from the platform. Um, one thing I want to know, if it's a fundraiser that you want to reference at all in the future, you may want to consider just simply hiding the fundraiser. And if you have access to it, if it's a campaign you've created, simply turning off donations for it in the settings of your fundraising page. Um, because if, again, once it's deleted, it's completely gone. So if you want you know, a fundraiser, even just to review the content you've had before, consider that, but always the delete button is available to you. So if there are old fundraisers associated to your nonprofit, this is where you would go to do so. Okay, so um, let's go into our settings area. So our settings area is going to be comprised of two key areas for all starter organizations, um, your admins and your organization settings. And so let's quickly go through our admin section. So as I noted, this is where you're going to be adding any new admins or removing any admins. To add a new admin, it's really easy. You simply select add new admin, and then you would enter that person's name, email address, and position. All you have to do is select send, and then that will add them on and send them a new admin email for them to reference. If there is an admin you want to delete, this happens frequently, obviously, because non within the nonprofit space, there's a high turnover. You can always head over here and simply select the X icon next to that person's name and remove them as an administrator. So it's really easy, easy to add and remove administrators. If we go back to our organization settings, Your organization settings will provide you the ability to add EFT information or update your legal address and your legal name. There are also a couple of different options available here, um, such as updating the URL of your organization or hiding your organization profile page, as well as looking at donation fee management. Um, I won't go into details of that right now, uh, but one, again, I want to go through the EFT. Um, and also the social sharing component of this section, because those are going to be the things that you might utilize the most on this page. So social sharing provides you the ability to customize the image and the text that show up when a user shares their your URL of your profile on Facebook or Twitter. Um, as you see, when you share a link on those social media platforms, Typically, you know, an image or in a description pops up for the URL. That's what you can edit here. For Instagram, Instagram is set up completely different than Facebook or Twitter. So you're not going to be able to have that function. That's really meant for those two social sharing platforms, Facebook and Twitter. So you can do that through social sharing. Okay, so for setting up EFT, this is the last thing to do on the to-do list. Uh, to set up EFT, we highly recommend it. EFT is direct deposit. Um, the reason why we highly recommend to do it is because for EFT, we send out disbursements twice a month. With check disbursements, there is a $5 service fee, and we only send out disbursements once a month. As well with EFT, there isn't um, you know, the worry about losing a check in the mail. Um, you receive funds much quicker. It's faster. It's much easier. So to set up EFT, you would simply select set up EFT, and then you would enter your routing and account number. And then after this phase, you will be asked to provide a copy of a voided check or a bank letter. Uh, so what we are looking for is just verification and documentation that the EFT information you're providing us belongs to the nonprofit the EIN of the nonprofit, 
that you are trying to set up EFT for. So your bank letter avoided check should have your legal organization name. It should have your legal mailing address. It should have the routing and account number that you have listed. And ideally it will have your EIN. If you don't have a voided check that has the EIN, that's perfectly fine. Um, but if you were requesting a bank letter from your bank, you know, I would ask them to include the EIN associated with that bank, or I'm sorry, with your account. Once you enter that information, our team is going to review what you have submitted and they're either going to approve it or sometimes we ask for additional clarification questions, etc. If you are planning on receiving disbursements via check, that's not a problem. Like I said, we will send out once a month, there is a $5 service fee and we will send it out to the legal mailing address listed right here. Um, so if you need to update your legal mailing address, you can simply select update address. And in order to update your legal mailing address, we will also need verification documentation. Again, we always wanna ensure that we are sending funds to the nonprofit. So uh, in order to update this legal mailing address, we will need a copy of a government document, bank statement, or utility bill that lists your organization name and your new mailing address. If you need to update your legal name, maybe you changed it with the state, et cetera, you can simply select, I need to update my legal organization name and also add documentation for that. Um, when it comes to legal organization name, we will request that you provide us documentation from the IRS or the state uh, that you know has that documentation that you've changed your name as an organization. Again, we are want our best and do our best due diligence to make sure that funds are going to the correct place and to the correct organization. Okay, so we have a couple of questions that come in, so I am going to go through some of those questions. So how do you prevent recurring donations? So that's that can be a complicated question because there are many organizations on the platform that have different goals. Um, for many, for some organizations, their goal is to create to receive recurring donations. Um, if you're not interested in receiving recurring donations on the platform, it is an optional tool available for donors. So, you know, you really then in your email marketing want to incentivize one-time donations um, and, and, you know, you won't have to worry necessarily then about donors feeling required to set up monthly donations. Does Mighty Cause have the ability to connect to Zoom so we can direct a donation toward a webinar fundraising event? Does that fall under this campaign piece? Um, that's a really great, interesting question. I've never received that before. Um, so one option would be, again, if you're creating a campaign where you have that piece, is to add that within your thank you page. Um, if you want to create that link and say, hey, thank you for donating, um, please head over to our webinar. Um, on our advanced plan, we do have a tool called Integrations Available. Um, this is a integration that we have with Zapier. For those of you who are not familiar with Zapier, Zapier is a really great platform that uh, the goal of it is to automate workflows between different um, platforms. I'm, I'm not sure if Zoom is available on Zapier, so that's something that I would have to look into, or you are also welcome to check out Zapier and explore Zapier, but that tool is available on our advanced plan. But with Zapier, you can create different automations. Um, for example, if you utilize MailChimp, you could create an automation through Zapier um, where a new donor went into a MailChimp list. So the world is your oyster as long as Zoom or a similar you know, tool is on Zapier. Um, I'm not sure, again, how that automation would look like, but you are more than welcome to check out Zapier. And it's also really easy to see the type of zaps, as they call it, that you can create. Okay, so do all campaigns go towards our total number of donors and goals? Great question. Yes, so on your profile, this total number here is going to include any donation your organization has received. So 
right here, this our page has, we've created a couple of campaigns already. We've already received a couple of donations, as you can see through here. Um, right now, those are all donations, so that's why they're not coming up because we've made our date raised yesterday. But if we received $100 from this fundraiser right here, that would be added to our total. This is going to, this profile is going to encompass, encompass all donations we have, we've received on the platform. And that's a really great thing that I kind of wanna also um, just clarify as well. If you're running a campaign on a specific fundraising page like this, where you're soliciting donations through a campaign, you wanna make sure that you are directing people towards your campaign and that people are donating through here. If someone makes a donation on this campaign, it's going to be included in your total raised on your profile, again, including all donations you received. But if someone makes a general donation to your organization, it's not gonna be included in your total for this mighty gala, for example, because that donor is making a general donation to your organization. They're making a fund, they're making a donation to your general fund. They're not making it directly on your Mighty Gala page. So it's not corresponding it. So that donation is not going to be included in these metrics. Um, not something you have to be overly concerned about, just something I wanted to highlight if you were utilizing a campaign page that you are making sure that you're publicizing um, and letting donors know that. Homeable friendly is the platform, and I don't see that you can donate as a donor using PayPal. Is that correct? You have to enter a credit card to donate. Uh, donors can use PayPal. So if you select donate um, in the checkout option, there is it's automatically going to be credit card. There's a button that says other payment methods, and then they can select the drop down and select PayPal, and they can donate through PayPal, and that is an option. Um, our platform, you know, we are is incredibly mobile friendly. We try our best to be mobile friendly. Um, our site is actually mobile responsive. So dependent on the device you're looking at and the size of the device, our website's going to function in order to, you know, look best for the device that you're utilizing it and its dimensions. Um, um, on our advanced plan as well, um, if you know mobile is something that you really are trying to incentivize donors to you know go towards or you know your donors are um mostly on mobile on our advanced plan we have text to give available um text to give allows you to create a keyword for your nonprofit and then associate and you can associate that even to a campaign so that when a donor texts a keyword like um mighty and they text um, our keyword number, they're gonna be automatically prompted to make a donation. So we've tried our best to make this as mobile friendly for all don donors. Okay, due to COVID-19, we're using a PO box for our mail, but I cannot change, I cannot change the mailing address easily. What documentation would be needed for this? Um, for a, for legal mailing address, again, we're just looking to make sure that funds are going to the right place. So we would need a utility bill, um, a government document, a bank statement. That would suffice to verify that funds are going to the organization directly. Uh, if you have any trouble or issues with uploading your document, feel free to reach out our support team and we can help facilitate and make that change. Do the reports show which campaign the person gave through? Yes. Um, I'm not sure. I'm in a demo environment, so I might not have, I think I can pull a good example. Okay, the, uh, yeah, here's a gr great one. Um, so as you see here, uh, the ones that don't have anything campaigns, they were just given to the organization in general. They're not tied to a specific campaign. In the campaigns column, if a donor gave to a specific campaign, you would be able to see that here. And again, let's say then I want to pull up um, everyone who gave to, let's find a campaign, our Mighty Gala. I can pull up that list here and I can review that here or I can export this as well. 
Um, can thank you emails be customized for each campaign? Yes, so if you have a, in this example, the Mighty Gala, you wanna have your own thank you page or even add your own thank you message for this gala, um, within that fundraising page, you have your own dashboard and you can go to donations and donor experience and select post checkout and write your own message for that specific campaign. Otherwise, if you don't write a thank you message or a thank you um, message for your receipt, then it's going to just automatically take what you have on, from your organization profile. Um, okay, so to clarify what you said earlier for Give Out Day, any campaigns under the org do credit toward the Give Out Day donor tally. Yes. Any donations, if you are participating in a giving event, any donations you've received on the platform, as long as it's during the time frame of early giving, it's going to count towards your leaderboards. Um, so again, like if you have a campaign because you're either running a gala or maybe you have a specific program, I'm gonna make something up, an after school program that you're raising funds for that's maybe separate from your um, general donations, but you're still accepting donations from both, all of it's going to count towards your leaderboard and towards your donations. So we have a couple of minutes left. I just want to shout out some support that we have available to you in case any questions come up after this webinar. So one is our support team. So you can always contact our support, support at mydecause.com. Um, if you Again, any questions come up, feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to clarify or help out um, in any way. The second is um, if you are participating in a um, giving event, such as Give Out Day, as a couple of people have mentioned, then feel free to go to the resource section of your giving event. There will be information directly related to your giving event, such as webinars and and um, a toolkit that will provide you templates, et cetera. And then lastly, we have our own support form available to um, everyone. If you have any further questions, our support articles will actually guide you through certain things. Like you're, if you're interested in building a fundraiser or you're building a team or you want to learn more about you know, your nonprofit settings, et cetera, our support article will guide you through there um, and show you all the information that we've gone through in this webinar and training session. Um, and lastly, if there are any further training sessions that you would love to see on the platform, please let us know. Um, we are always looking to find out what our organizations on the platform, you know, what will be most useful for them um, and help better them utilize the platform. Um, and help run their campaigns in a more efficient and seamless way. So please let us know, you know what type of information, um, either blog post, webinar, training session is most useful to you. We love hearing that feedback. It's really helpful for us and it guides us to build more tools and um, et cetera. This webinar will be sent out to you. It will be sent out in a follow-up email, um, which should be sent out tomorrow. I will also post this to our um, YouTube channel. So you will have, you can also um, reference that if you want to see that, um, um, you know, today, later on today. I hope this was really helpful for everyone. Please let us know if you need anything else. And I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much. Bye.